Today's afternoon webinar is Office on the Go, the Mobile Office Basics. Just a quick introduction. My name is Anthony. I work at the Orange County Association of Realtors. Been here now 15 years. Started off in the MLS department, so I know I'll speak to everyone regarding rules, regulations, violations, things like that. What I'm also involved with is our outreach program. Our outreach program is designed to give you various training on your tools and products. So not only do I train on MLS, but I also train on the uh, tablet devices. And and that's basically what the Office on the Go Basics is going to be all about today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over two big things for your bread and butter, and that is CRMLS, how to access CRMLS on your mobile tablet device, and most importantly, how to access and write up contracts, and most importantly, sign contracts using a free member benefit called ZipForms Mobile. So I'm going to show you both of those. That way, maybe we can start getting you to go paperless in your business by utilizing these products and these features to be able to show properties quickly and easily, be able to look up properties quickly and easily, and most importantly, now write up sign contracts while you're on the go. You don't have to leave your client's presence. You don't have to go back to the office or anything like that. You're going to be out there in the field. And really, honestly, when it comes to mobile, MLS access, one of the many reasons why we as an association, as CRMLS, went over to the matrix system about six, seven years ago was that the matrix system was not only computer friendly, meaning that you could use it on a Mac and PC, but it's also browser friendly, so it's compatible with all the browsers like Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, uh, Safari, Internet Explorer, things like that, but it's also mobile friendly. Now, I know that there are a ton of apps that everybody probably attending today's webinar has heard of, like Home Seekers, the CRMLS app, and MLS Touch, but the big difference between those apps and what I'm going to have you do today is that those apps, and I'll show you one here, MLS Touch as an example, I can search the MLS, but the big thing that I cannot do is everything else that I can do on the MLS. I can't do an auto email. I can't set up multiple, or I can't um, input a listing, most importantly. I can't select multiple properties to email them to a client or, or anything like that. These types of apps like MLS Touch and Home Seekers allow me a search only option, meaning I can be on the go, locate myself via my GPS, and pull up properties around me. Those are all well and good. But there are times where I need to be able to do things as a real estate agent in the MLS that these apps currently cannot provide. So it all comes down to us logging into the MLS. Now, in this case, I'm on an iPad, but if those of you who are attending are using an Android or even a phone device, what you want to do is you want to open up your web browser. Now, if you're an iPad or an iPhone user, this is going to be Safari. If you're an Android tablet user, you're going to open up either the browser or Internet that's on your phone or tablet device. We're going to go to where it says Safari. We're going to open up and go to the web browser, and from here, we're going to go to crmls.org. As you notice here on my iPad, crmls.org looks exactly the same crmls.org that I pull up on my computer screen. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the matrix login section. Now, before I input my username and password into the MLS, what I want to do from this screen is I'm going to bookmark it. But I'm going to bookmark it in such a fashion that I'm going to make it look like an app on my tablet device. And how I do that is with this feature here, and I'm going to highlight it. It's this box with the arrow coming out of it. It's called the magic button or share button. If you're an Apple user, you're going to see this through most, if not all, apps through Apple. Now, if you're on a phone device, this icon will be at the bottom middle of the screen. So after you go to the website, you go to matrix login, you're going to tap on that box with the arrow coming out of it. Okay. Now, from here, I'm going to be given a list of choices. Down below, typically, we always choose either add as bookmark or add as a favorite, right? That's what we're used to doing in any web browser. Stop. Don't do that. Instead, what I want you to do is I want you to scroll through this list and find the choice that says add to home screen. It should look like this. When we tap on add to home screen, 
we're going to get a nice little lovely icon that appears on what this bookmark is going to look like. Here in black is a default name of the system. If we wanted to, we can rewrite over this. What I mean by that, I'm going to tap to get my cursor to blink, and now I can rename this link. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to call it CRMLS. You can call it Matrix. You can call it MLS, CRMLS Matrix, whatever. Whatever you decide you want to name it, now you're going to come over to the top right corner and tap on Add. Now what will happen is, is that you're taken back to your home screen, and now you have a nice little lovely icon of this bookmark. What does this mean for you? Well, it means that now, instead of you going into the web, going typing in CRMLS matrix, then typing in our matrix login, instead, because we've bookmarked it from the login area, and we tap, we are immediately taken to the login area for CRMLS. Now all we need to do is just type in our username and password for the MLS system. So what does this mean for you as an agent? This means that now when I am at getting my day started and I'm at Starbucks and I've ordered my Vente Ice Non-Fat White Chocolate Mocha No Whip because it's Thursday, not Friday, and I get a call from a potential lead that says, hey, Tony, can you tell me about a property or tell me about information? That I'm seeing instead of telling them, oh, let me call you back in about 10 minutes to let me get back to the office. All I need to do now is just sit at the table there at Starbucks, log in to the MLS, and now you'll see here that I am now logged into the regular MLS database. This is on my tablet. If you are logging in from your phone, what will happen first is that you're going to log into the CRMLS Matrix Mobile Edition, whereby you're going to see a list of menu choices, okay, searching, map search, things like that, which is fine, but that, again, is a search-only engine portal. But if you scroll down to the bottom of that screen on your phone, there will be a button that says Full Site. If you tap on Full Site, you will then be able to access everything that you see here. So, like on the computer, just being on my mobile tablet device, I can access or access my save searches, I can create a save search, I can even add and modify a listing, everything that I can normally do on the computer, I'm just doing it on my tablet. So, we have the advantage of being on the go, being able to access the MLS system. Are there any questions so far? So, from here, we've got the MLS system. I'm going to show you how to utilize the MLS for a quick search. Okay. Now, I know with, with most everybody, I love running searches in the MLS. Searches are probably the most common thing that every agent does at some point. Okay. You're there at Starbucks. You're waiting for your coffee. You get a call from that potential lead, right? And a lot of times, what does that potential lead tell you? I'm looking at this address. What I could do is I could go over to search. And I could go to residential and then detailed search, right, as I do normal, to type in all this lovely bit of information. But instead of doing that, I'm going to utilize a feature in the MLS system called the speed bar. Now, the speed bar, and I will highlight this, the speed bar allows me to type in very quick search criteria to be able to pull up property information. Now, the speed bar is located right underneath the green tabs here. Doesn't matter what tab I'm on, that speed bar will always be there. If you notice that at the very top, that speed bar is right there, regardless of whatever menu choice I decide to go to. Okay, and there it is. So, when I log into the MLS while being at Starbucks, I get a call from that potential lead, and that potential lead gives me a property address. Say they saw it on one of the many websites like Zillow or Realtor.com or Redfin or Purple Brick or wherever else, right? And they tell me, okay, Tony, can you tell me any, about any properties that are located at 6, whoops, 6 Clearwater? Here I'm just typing in the street number and street name. If you notice, I'm not putting in lane, drive, street, and I'm not putting in any city information. I'm just putting in the street number and the street name. Now when I press the search icon, 
I'm telling the MLS database to look for everything in the MLS database going back 16 years for any property related to Six Clearwater. Here we've pulled up several properties, about seven of them. Some sold, some canceled. Maybe if there were any active, I'd see those. Any pending, I'd see those. So anything regardless of their status or property type. Here we've got several properties that are for sale. I also, let's see here. I don't see any of the leases. I used to see the leases here. So I'm going to have to talk to CRMLS about that one. But I also see every property that was listed in every city. So here we have several six, uh, six Clearwaters, a couple in Laguna Niguel, a few in Irvine, so on and so forth. Now, we happen to find the listing that the client's talking about. We tap on it, and we can see the agent full report. Why? Because I'm logged into the MLS. I get to see the agent full report. I'm sure all of us have run into this situation where there has been no property or when a client calls us about a particular property and we see kind of this scenario where there are no actives. Maybe the, that property they're inquiring about is, is impending or that property closed two years ago. But some of those websites don't update their data on a regular basis the way they should. Does this mean that our conversation ends with this client? No, hopefully not, right? Well, now we're going to utilize the speed bar one other way. In talking with the client still, and tell the client, oh, I'm so sorry that this property doesn't show active. You know, I do see that the last time that the property was listed, it was sold, yada, yada, yada. But what else are you looking for? So the client tells me they are looking for active homes, say in Laguna Hills. And they have a price range, them and their spouse between, oh, I don't know, $750,000 to $950,000. And they'd really like to only see single-family resident homes. Here, typing in some very quick search criteria, and now hitting that search icon, I found five properties that meet this client's criteria that are active in Laguna Hills between $750 and $950 that are single-family properties. Now, I can either select the selected properties and you know maybe one or two and then come under actions and email them or even better yet not select any properties at all and immediately come over to save and set them up on an auto email drip campaign so it really you know is nice for us to be able to utilize that speed bar to do some quick searches all while now my coffee is ready I can now sit on those comfy couches there at Starbucks and enjoy a cup of coffee and still be able to do the work that I need. You're probably asking yourself, how do I type in this information into the speed bar? And does not matter the order? Well, I'll tell you right now, it does not matter the order in which I type the information into the speed bar, but it does matter the format. If you notice here, I put in A for active. I typed in the full city of Laguna Hills. I had put in the dollar sign for the price. Well, how do I know the format? I'm going to ask a real crazy question here. Has anybody ever done a search in the MLS? And if you have, next to every searchable field in the MLS, there's a question mark. And if you've ever clicked on the question mark next to one of those fields, it's a basic help menu, right? It tells you what information is it, that field is looking for and how to type in that information. Well, if we look here on the speed bar, just off to the left, there is the all-important question mark. So once I tap on the question mark here, a new little window opens up for me, and now I get to see all the fun different pieces of information that I can type into that speed bar. There are 22 different pieces of information that I can type in. My disclaimer, do I expect every agent to memorize all 22 different formats? No. Maybe your top five. Maybe your top five being the MLS number, street address, status, city, and price. Those are typically the top five things that you as an agent need in order to find properties quickly and easily on the MLS. So now if I was typing in multiple statuses or multiple items, very simply choose that format. So like here, if I was looking for multiple statuses for properties, all I would need to do is type in A, put a space, P, space, U, space, S. Now I'm looking for active pending, backup, and closed. 
If I was uh, doing a price range, this is where a lot of people mess up on that speed bar. The dollar sign is only required in front of the very first number. Do not put in two dollar signs. Do not put any commas or decimal points in that price. And of course, if you don't have a dollar sign anywhere, then you may not pull up any properties either because it wouldn't understand if you were talking about date or bedroom or bathroom or anything else like that. So just be mindful of the formats. You can even look at different property types, subtypes. So you can look at residential, lease, income, commercial, cross property, everything. So I love this speed bar. If you've never used a speed bar before, this is a great tool to utilize. Are there any questions on this? None? Good. Okay. How else can we use the MLS? Well, we're going to utilize the MLS now for our showings. I know all, everybody that's probably attending today uh, shows property, or at least hopefully you're showing property. And I'm sure that one of the many things that you take with you on a showing appointment, besides yourself, your key, and your clients, are the property reports. Now, I know the property reports, bare minimum, are at least four pages long. And if we're showing six or seven properties today, that could be a quite a lot of paper. And heaven forbid you decide you want to print the photos with the listing. Now, if an agent has 75 photos, we're looking at for one report, for one property, seven pages. So if we have six properties today at seven pages each, that's roughly about, what, 42 sheets of paper that we have to carry with us? That's a lot of money, potentially, right? Because it costs money for the paper to print on and the ink that you're using to print. We want to cut down on that because our goal today as agents is going paperless. This is where we're going to utilize a feature in the MLS system called carts. The carts feature in the MLS was originally designed as a watch list, meaning that you found a property, didn't really meet your client's criteria right away, but you wanted to keep an eye on it just in case it did. So then you could select the property and move it to your client's cart. That way you could keep a watch on it. But today, what we can utilize the carts for are our showings. Ideally, this is how you would do that. Say the client wants to see some properties tomorrow. They give you the list of properties, either by address or MLS number. Maybe you utilize that speed bar, type in the multiple MLS numbers, just separate them out by spaces. Now you get to your results screen. When you get to your results screen, you start going into the body of the listing, looking at your showing instructions, and you start making your appointments, either using showing time or you're manually calling and text messaging the listing agent. At this point, you guys are selecting your properties, just like so. You made your appointments. Now, normally, most of us come under actions and go to where it says print, and we print out our PDF document, right? Seven pages for five showings, that's 35 sheets of paper. Well, again, today we're talking about going paperless, so instead of going under uh, actions and print, what we're instead going to do with these selected properties is we're gonna to go to the carts area. When we go to the carts area, what we're going to now do is that we're going to, it defaults to my cart. Now, there's nothing wrong with putting the listings in your cart, but when you have multiple showings with multiple different clients for tomorrow, if you put all of those listings under your cart, you've got to remember who those properties are for. So what you need to do is put the listings under your client's carts. So here are the list of my clients or contacts in the MLS database that I've inputted in. Now, if it's a brand new client, because, we, hey, they just called us on the phone, well, very easy to add a new client. We come over here to where it says new contact, tap on new contact, and now all we need to do is input a first name, a last name, and their email address. These are three vital things that we need in order to input a contact into the MLS database. We need to know their first name and last name. Why? Because we want to type them on contracts. We need to know their email address because we need to email them property information as well as other information about our business and contracts and all that other fun jazz. As we're going to input the first name, last name, email address of the client. Now we'll hit save and now they're added to our MLS database. Now once the client has been added, now from our list of contacts, we are now going to select that client. Now we're going to choose the button that says add to cart. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding these five listings to, in this case, my client Fred Durst's cart. At this point, 
come tomorrow, we're meeting at one of the properties, and I come with my iPad, I open up the MLS system. When I log into the MLS, I have a widget on the home screen called My Carts. Under My Carts widget are the list of my contacts with properties that I've installed into their cart. So in this case, all I need to do is just tap on Fred Durst cart to access those properties. If you're looking at your MLS system at the moment, and you don't see my carts, what I would probably look for is the additional widgets button down below. And down below underneath that are the list of all your tools that you don't have opened, one of which might say my cart. If you see it here, then all you need to do is press your finger or grab it with your mouse, drag it, and place it wherever on the screen. This is how you can customize your home screen to make things a lot easier to get to. Bring out your tools. I usually love using my carts for my showings, plus all the other tools that are available to me. If there's a tool that you don't like to use, simply click on the head, headline or tap on the headline and then hit the X icon. And that closes out that tool and puts it under the additional widgets section. So here you can totally customize what tools are available on your home screen. So with that said, we have here my carts. We meet Fred at the property. We now tap on Fred Durst's cart to open it up. And here are those five properties. Now, before we go into the listing, a couple of nice things about this right off the bat. I'm sure all of us showing property have run into this situation at some point in time, which was the client got super excited about wanting to make an offer on one of these homes, called up the listing agent to try to work out your offer, and the listing agent ended up telling you, oh, I'm so sorry, we went into escrow today. We changed the listing this morning, and we've opened escrow. I'm so sorry, we're not accepting any offers. But well, wouldn't that have been great to see at the time that you were showing the home? Well, hey, guess what? You're accessing the Lifetime MLS database right now. So right away, you get to see under the status section if the status changed between yesterday and today. Also, what's really nice about this one-line report, we also get to see if there was a price change on the listings. So for some reason, there were three listings between yesterday and today that went through a price drop, which is great. And I can even tap on the little down arrow there and actually see what that previous list price was, hopefully, or even better yet, a status. And I know most agents always say, well, I need to see the agent full report. Yes, you're in the MLS database. All you need to do under your account, tap on the listing, and now you have access to the full agent report. Okay, you can scroll through the photos if you wanted to. You can see the showing instructions, private remarks, everything. You can even come all the way down to below to the bottom of the listing. And under where it says photos here, you can tap on the down arrow and now look at all 75 photos on that property. So right there, you've got access to everything. All one inch thick, one, less than one pound device. We don't have to worry about paper, but we do need to have internet access. A couple of other nice, nice things about the cart feature, because Fred Durst may be getting an auto email from me. If he's on an auto email drip campaign, getting properties on a regular basis, the moment I put a listing into his cart, Fred is able to access any of these properties in his carts from his portal. I know, again, some agents love to print out the customer reports, along with the agent reports to give something to their client. Now you don't need to do that. All you got to do is ask your client to go into their portal and now they will see these properties. And again, because they're going into their agent port or their client portal, they will only see the customer report on these homes, which is super nice. Now there's also one other feature that's really nice with this. And that is with the portal, the ability to make notes. I put this in my client's cart. I and my client can make notes on these homes. Very simply tap the gray sheet of paper next to the listing. And from here, I can now write or type notes about the home. Call listing agent regarding refrigerator. See if included in list price. Now I can hit add a note. And now I've added a note to the pro to this property. Because I've added a note, Fred will see this note. If Fred makes a note, I will see Fred's notes. So in a way, this is a great way of being able to also correspond. 
Now, because Fred can see my notes and I can see Fred's notes, this is where we as the agents need to be careful. Please don't make any um, – be careful of the type of information you type in. Like, call Fran regarding fridge. Nine four nine five 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 five. Because now all of a sudden, when I add this note, Fred's got access to Fran, right? He's got Fran's name and he's got Fran's phone number. So now, why does why does Fred need to use me? So be careful of the type of notes that you make. Also, if for some reason, and not even for some reason, if we go into escrow on this property and we open up escrow, you know that part of your files are required to have all correspondence, especially electronic. These notes are going to be considered electronic correspondence, just like your text messages and emails. So it will be required for your files. So be, please be careful. Do not make any derogatory remarks about, say, the property or about the agent's clients, and most importantly, not about the other agent. I know we all take on our clients emotions when it comes to contracts and things like that that you know sometimes things can get heated but honestly we're there just to try to make the transaction go as smoothly as possible to try to negotiate on, on their client's behalf i'm here to negotiate on my client's behalf let's come somewhere in the middle and be mutual about it let's just treat each other with mutual respect by the way you guys are a small enough group of people in this business that if you don't work with this agent now, guaranteed you'll work with this agent at some point in time. So that's just always how those types of things work. So just be careful of the type of notes that you make. Are there any questions about notes? None? Good. All right. Next thing that we're going to go here, last thing regarding the carts. I'm sure most of us have all done this. You show up to the property. You open up the door. You don't even take a full step into the home. When your client goes, I don't like it. Let's go. What do you do with those printed property reports? You either A, stick them behind the other showings, and then you just have to remember which property they didn't like, or B, you know, fold them up, and then you start sticking all that stuff in between your seats of your car. And then after a week, when you go to do your weekly car wash, you're emptying out a whole box of paper. Well, here in the carts feature, if I select a property that my client didn't like, now all I need to do is come back under where it says carts, and now I have a choice that says remove checked. If I tap on remove check, that selected property along with any notes are now gone. This is called cart maintenance. Get rid of the properties your clients don't like. Keep the properties here that the clients do and probably want to make offers on. Okay. Now this does all require internet access. Obviously there are areas like areas in Irvine and Elisa Viejo, those condo areas where it seems that you have no cell signal. Uh, cell service. Now that's a big problem, right? Because if you don't have cell service, you're not going to have internet access, right? So this is where we're going to utilize third-party applications. What we're going to do is we're going to create PDF documents and then store them on our tablet memory, the actual hard drive of our tablet device. Now if you're an iPhone user, there are two apps that I recommend. The first one is called PDF Expert. Now, PDF Expert is a PDF reader, writer, and creator. So that means that any PDF that you open up, you can read it and read it normally and fully. Great for when you guys start getting contracts sent to you that are signed. This will allow you to see the signatures on those contracts. But most importantly, you can create PDFs and edit existing PDFs. Now, that app is about anywhere from $10 to $15 right now from your app store. One-time fee. This is where the second app comes in, and it's actually my more preferred app. The app itself is called Notability. The Notability app, N-O-T-A-B-I-L-I-T-Y, costs about $9.99 out of your app store. One-time fee. It actually used to be $3 at one point. Over the years, they have raised their cost, but... What this app does is exactly the same thing as PDF Expert. It reads PDFs, it writes on PDFs, and it creates its own PDFs. It does exactly the same thing except that the buttons are way more user-friendly and there's not so many bells and whistles that you get lost and overwhelmed. So it's very simplistic to use. I personally like it. I love it. How are we going to use the Notability app for our showings? Very simple. 
Say I'm on the computer, I put the listings in my carts for tomorrow. Now, what I'm going to do while I have great internet access at home, I'm going to have my backup stored on my iPad. So if I do not have internet access on my iPad come tomorrow, when I go and show properties, I at least have this backup static PDF of all my showings. This is what I do. I'm going to go onto my iPad or in my tablet device. I'm going to log into the MLS. I'm going to go to my client's carts like I did here. And now I'm going to select the properties that we're showing tomorrow. Now from here, I am going to go back under actions. Now under actions, I am now going to go to where it says print. Now I know what you're saying. You said, Tony, you said we weren't going to print out these PDF documents. We're not. What we are going to do is create the PDF document first, and then we're going to store that PDF onto our iPad's memory into the Notability app. So I'm not required to have internet access. I'm going to go to where it says print. Now I'm going to deselect the agent one line report, and now I'm going to say select the agent full. Now I'm going to come down below and choose print to PDF. Now you'll notice I'm still on the internet here. The iPad is now creating the agent full PDF document right on the internet. What's going to happen is that when this PDF document opens up, here's the PDF document. Now what I'm going to do, I need to get this PDF document from the internet into the Notability app. Now I will say that some agents have said, well, all I need to do is stop right here, right? No, we need to get this stored offline because even the, I'm still on the internet. So even though this is created, the moment I open up the internet and I have no internet access, this will end up being blank. This is why we have that app. I'm going to come over to the magic button from here. Now, instead of going down below where I add to home screen, right, because we're not bookmarking a website, I'm going to go over to the top middle here where I've got a list of applications. And what I'm going to do at this point is find the application that I want these PDF documents to be copied into, one of which is Notability. So I'm going to choose at this point, Copy to Notability. Now Notability is going to open up. It's going to ask me, would I like to create a brand new note? I'm going to say, create a new note. Here are all 21 pages for those four properties. Now I'm going to say import. The PDF document has been created and stored on my iPad in the Notability app. So we've got a couple of nice things that we can do here. First and foremost, we can look at the agent full report because now it's a static report as if we had printed it out on our printer. But we need to put in the showing order. Right now, the, the Cards feature does not allow us to rearrange the order of our showings because I know everybody in this room shows property in a particular order from start to finish, where you start first to where you end up. Unfortunately, the Cards feature in the MLS does not allow you to switch the order, though you can select the properties, choose directions, and switch it that way. It still does not change it in the Cards, but because I am in a PDF editor, I can modify this PDF document. I'm going to come over here to the top right corner and I'm going to click on the pages icon. The pages icon now gives me and displays for me all the various different pages within this PDF file. So now if I want to rearrange the showing order, all I need to do essentially is grab a page, drag it with my finger or stylus and let go. So this is how we can change the order of our showings, just like so. So now we can rearrange everything and put everything in our showing order for tomorrow. We put everything in our showing order. Come tomorrow, we need to sit down with the client. We're going through the properties, so on and so forth. We need to make notes on these properties. We have several ways of doing this. The first is the T icon. The T icon allows me to type text on this PDF document. So I can go anywhere on the PDF document. And let's find a good blank space here. Um, let me just find some more space. There we go. I'm going to hit the T icon. And now I'm going to tap on this page. And now I can begin to type in text. Just like so. 
we're walking around a property, we're probably holding the iPad with one hand, and now we're trying to type one-handed. Kind of difficult. If you notice here on the keyboard, anybody ever hear of voice dic uh, dictation? Sure, we all have, right? Sure, every agent in this room does voice to text messages, which can be a little fun, right? Well, if we look here on the keyboard, we have the all-important microphone icon down below on this keyboard. Tap where I want my text to start. Now I can hit the microphone icon, and now we can dictate what we need to, period. So, property looks really great, exclamation point. Call listing agent regarding refrigerator and hallway to see if included in list price, period. Van Gogh painting, buyer would love to purchase, period. And now we're done. Now we just voice to text some notes. Now I know most of us in this room probably don't want to talk out loud because you don't want to influence your client. So we want, and we don't want to just type one-handed. Well, we have a stylus. We have the pencil icon. The pencil icon, I can make my own notes. I can handwrite them. I can circle things or X through things about these properties. Whoop, whoop, they don't like this property. So now we can actually handwrite on certain things. We can even, and maybe we'll choose orange today, we can even highlight on the PDF. We can do all this stuff. So now we can do exactly what we could do on a static document. We can look at the agent full report. We can make our dictations or notations on the properties that our clients that we're showing to our clients today. So I really, really, really like this this application. And this also serves as a great backup. You can't get into the internet. You haven't printed the property reports because you have taken the time to put those property reports in the Notability app. You now still have access to what you need to be able to tell the clients what they need to know about these homes. So what I would do is, after you put the properties in the carts, go on to your mobile tablet device. If you have the Notability or even PDF Expert app downloaded, then put those PDFs in there. Use the carts, take the carts, or take the listings from the cart, and put it in at least Notability or PDF Expert to give yourself a backup. Are there any questions on this? So we got one other thing to go over here today in your basics, and that is zip forms. Now I know um, the big thing that we, we need to look at is, the big thing that we uh, get to look at is that now the clients are excited about making offers or, or we're doing a listing presentation and they want to list with us. This is where Zip Forms Mobile comes in. Now Zip Forms Mobile, like Zip Forms, is free, a CAR member benefit to all Realtor members. If you're on an iPad, you want to download the application called Zip Form Mobile Companion. And I'll repeat that, Zip Form Mobile Companion. It's a separate app, though you can go into Safari, go into car.org, and access your ZipForms account, which will, on a tablet device, access ZipForms Mobile. Android users, there is no app. You have to go through the internet to access ZipForms Mobile. So as long as you're on a tablet device or iPhone device or a phone device, you're going to be accessing ZipForms Mobile. Now, the cool thing or cool advantage is that you'll be able to access all your pre-existing existing or create new transactions as if you were sitting there on the computer with one added bonus in zip forms mobile because we are in touch screens on the mobile devices especially tablets this will allow us to get our clients to physically sign on the contract way better than say digital ink or docusign because now we are in front of the client we can now get them to physically sign on the contracts in front of them so the goal is is that now after we show them property we don't leave their presence or we do our listing presentation we don't leave their presence because there's that cooling off period oh yeah I want to make an offer on this or sure I want to list with you great I'm gonna go back to the office I'm gonna write up my contracts and I'm gonna send it to you for digital signing by the time you get back to the office you write up the contract which could be what an hour or two from now they've cooled off and I know every agent that's attending has heard this before, you know what, we decided to change our mind, see what the market does, yada, yada, yada. Or worse yet, this was a listing up presentation, and two minutes after you left, another agent happened to come by, they haven't had the contract, so we decided to list with them. Eh, killer, right? 
We don't want that. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to download the app. Now, when you download the app on an iPad, you open up the app, Applications, it forms Mobile Companion. This is where we need to log in. Now, this is where a lot of common mistakes happen. Even though you're, you're logging to zip forms, we need to change the credentials. Everyone outside of the state of California uses zip forms credentials, but because we are CAR members, we have to choose the down arrow and choose CAR credentials. When we choose CAR credentials, we now input our username and password for zip forms going through CAR's account. Now I'm going to hit submit. Now I'm going to be logged right into my transaction list. Every transaction I created on zip forms online, I now have access to. To access a pre existing transaction, just tap on the transaction itself. Now I can go to the documents button like I would in regular zip forms. And now I can access all my forms within the transaction. There we go. There's the form. Now, if I'm creating a brand new transaction, very simple. From here, as regular zip forms, we go to new. We choose the property or transaction type. Now we can name it. We can access an MLS Connect. We can import the MLS listing data. Find that listing and use that listing, hopefully. There we go. I can even access one of my many templates that I've created in zip forms. Now when I hit save, we've officially created the transaction. If you do not have templates, not a problem. Same thing, we just don't add a template, not a big deal. We hit save. Now we can go to the documents area, go to the where it says all forms over here to the right, and now we tap once, tap twice on the form to add the form. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and add in our forms, just like so. We tap on the form to go in and modify the form with our terms, right? Simply tap where it needs to go, type in the information. Whatever we need for this document. All while maybe I take my clients out to lunch or I take them out for coffee. And while they're enjoying a cup of coffee and we're talking, I'm writing up the terms of the agreement all right in front of them. Most importantly, don't forget to hit save at the top there. Now, once we hit save and we've written up our terms, they're ordering dessert, the tiramisu or the creme brulee. We now need to do what? Sign the contracts. In zip forms, we do have access. We do have access to e-sign. If you'll notice over here towards the left, we have the button that's called e-sign. So we've written up our contracts. We now need to get our clients to sign these documents. So when I click on e-sign, as if I was doing a digital signing, I would hit create a new signature packet. Now here, this is where we're going to change some things real quick. We don't need to worry about a packet name. Again, it's all based on our transaction name. But here under the signing service, you'll notice that I'm defaulted to digital ink. I can send this out to a client for digital signing. So that means that you guys, even though you're on vacation, I know you're really not on vacation. And I know some of us have experienced this, that when we're on vacation, we actually need to do work. So while you're sitting on the beach enjoying your Mai Tai, you can actually email documents out for signatures. But because in this situation, I am in front of my client, I don't want to email them the documents for digital signing. I want them to physically sign the document. So I need to click on the down arrow under the signing service and from here I've got my different signing choices. DocuSign and DigitalLink are all about digital signing, meaning I email it to the client and they sign it separately. But because I'm in front of my client and I want them to physically sign, this is a feature in ZipForms Mobile called TouchSign. TouchSign allows the signer to physically sign on my tablet device and apply their signature their real wet signature 
on the document. So we're going to select touch sign. Now we're going to select what documents are going to be signed by the clients. Now when I hit close, we're going to go over to where it says next. Now we select the transaction parties, just like in digital signing. And now we're going to select the transaction party because, again, we're in front of the client. First name, last name, email address filled in based on the cover sheet. If you do not have the cover sheet, first name and last name will be filled in. Tap where it says email, type in their email address. Then you'll be able to select the signer or signers. Once the signers are selected, we're now going to hit close. Here, doesn't matter the order in this case because we're going to be physically signing right here at the table. I'm now going to go to next. Now this is where the real fun begins. I'm going to turn my iPad over to my client or clients. I'm going to hand them my stylus. Now, by the way, if you don't have a stylus, that's okay. People can write with their fingers. It's okay. But I will tell you, you may want to invest in a stylus. Two reasons. One, people tend to write a lot more accurately using a writing instrument than with their own finger. Second, if we happen to go to In-N-Out today because they wanted In-N-Out for lunch, do I want their greasy fingers all over my iPad? Probably not. Invest in a stylus. Go to the 99 cent store, grab a stylus for your tablet device. When I turn, give them the stylus, because I want to look professional, I give them the stylus. Here you go. Use my stylus to sign. What I need you to do first and foremost, please read through the legal consent. The legal consent basically explains what we're about to do and what the advantages, disadvantages are of digitally signing. Hopefully at the bottom they hit, I agree. If they disagree, that's not what we're trying to do today. So today, they hit, I agree. At the very top, what document we're currently signing, who's currently signing. So I'm going to hand my stylus over to Bobby Sue. We're going to be signing the, RP, the RPA. So now what I'm going to instruct Bobby Sue to do is come over here to the left-hand side. These are the tasks that Bobby Sue can do on a form. So at this point, I'm going to have Bobby Sue tap on with her stylus on sign. And now Bobby Sue is going to tap with the stylus to sign. I'm also now going to have her tap on the initial and now tap to initial. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to hit this big red X and now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the contract. Me being the great agent that I am, I'm going to read this contract to her and to Bobby Joe. We come up to an area where Bobby Sue needs to sign her initial. She's now going to tap with the stylus where it says sign. There's her signature here, but I need to move it or get her to move it to where it needs to be signed. So if she places her finger stylus on that four-way arrow, she can now drag it to where it needs to go. And now she can hit the or tap on the sign button. Now Bobby Sue has just placed her real signature on this document. She can even add in a date. Oh, here's the date. You tap the date. You can move the date. The date's too big for that box. Down below where it says add date, there's three sidewards uh, lines here. They place their finger or stylus on those sidewards lines. They can drag it in, make it smaller. Whoops. Make it smaller or make it bigger by pulling it out. Just like so. So the idea behind touch sign is to have the client sign once, initial once, and now what we're going to do is have the clients move, drag, place on the documents. The initials, boop, resize, size, there we go. Move it, initial, just like so. Once we're done with the first document, we come back up to the top. We hit the down arrow, we select the next document. Once the first signer is done, we now change the signers. reason why we don't change the signers is if you'll notice here, signer 2 has to agree, and now when they hit sign, that first signer's initials and signatures are wiped clean. What we need to do is have the client sign once, initial once, and now we go through the document with the first person first, 
then we change the signers to the second. If you did it in between Bobby Sue and Bobby Joe, they're going to need to re-sign and re-initial each and every time. But what's nice about the second signer is that we've already read the contracts to both people at the same time, so the second signer is going to go even faster. So it's like we're signing real physical documents. After everybody is done signing here, myself included, right, because don't forget to include yourself, the moment that we're all done signing all of our documents, at the very top right here, the moment I hit done, several things happen. When I hit done and I click on OK, Zip Forms automatically emails all the signers their signed PDF documents. So everybody gets everything all at once within the first two minutes. So Bobby Sue, Bobby Joe, and myself get an email sent to us that the documents are completed, and in each of those emails are the signed PDF files. Now, if you were in my first class, we were talking about Digital Inc. and DocuSign uploading the documents automatically to a transaction. Well, guess what? In the body of a transaction, in the first couple of minutes here, or the first 30 seconds of me hitting done, in this transaction, a folder is automatically created within the first 30 seconds. And there the folder says, sign documents on March 1st at 2.11 p.m. I go into that folder, and now here are the signed PDFs. Just like so. So now I get to see all the physical signatures. So you get all the signers to sign, then you hit done, and now you've got everything signed. This is striking while the iron's hot. I haven't left my clients at all. They're excited about making an offer. They're excited about making you know, a listing. Here in an offer, now, because I'm in front of them, I can submit this offer right away to the listing agent, right? At the top here, I can email them this PDF RPA. Now I've officially submitted my offer. So hopefully maybe I'm first offer, not 51st. If I'm the listing agent and this is a listing agreement, hey, guess what? In my listing presentation, I've told um, some agents will say, I'll have your home listed within 48 hours. Why wait? They need to move in 30 days. Guess what? I can now tell them that the moment you and I sign this contract, I'll have your home listed before I leave the house. Because guess what? I signed the contracts on my iPad. Now I can leave my iPad or leave ZipForms Mobile on my iPad, go right back into the MLS system, and now under Add Edit, list the property right then and there. So the whole idea behind what we are just showing you today, this is your full mobile office. You've got internet access. You've got access to the MLS. So that way you can run your searches, add and modify your listings, create CMAs, everything you need to on the MLS, and now with ZipForms Mobile, you have the ability to write up and now sign contracts. So you're out there doing exactly what you guys should be doing, and that's getting business and getting business done quickly and efficiently. Really rarely should you ever come back to the office or go to the office unless for one of two reasons. One, the occasional class or office meeting, or two, or most importantly, picking up your commission check. That's what you guys should be doing. Because right now you should be the ABCs, always be closing those deals. And this is how we can do that. Are there any questions on this? Just to give you my information again, in case you guys ever want to email me or call me, um, my phone number is 949-586-6800, extension 104. And you can also email me anytime with any questions, Tony, T-O-N-Y, at ocar.org. I hope you guys really have a lot of fun. Try out ZipForms Mobile. You're welcome, Lisa. Um, try out ZipForms Mobile. All right, well, with all that said, I hope everybody has a great week. And feel free to email me anytime with any questions. And I look forward to speaking with you all very, very soon. So I hope you all have a great and fun day. Thank you.